Hello, and welcome to Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, today is November 2nd, and this is the EVUS US uh, time zone in addition. Uh, today we have myself and Bruno Vrakten, and uh, Mark, if he joins us, we welcome him as we will anyone else if they show up. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching. Uh, on the agenda today, we have um, some just another note on the version documentation for Jenkins.io. Uh, the Plugin Health Scores blog post that Adrian wrote. Uh, another blog post from a new author uh, by the name of Mark Phillips uh, on updating Jenkins. Uh, I wanted to just highlight a couple, a uh, few small uh, pull requests that were submitted by new contributors. Uh, prototype being removed from Jenkins. Uh, the next LTS baseline is going to be releasing in a couple weeks. Uh, Jenkins governance and officer elections for this year. Uh, Hacktoberfest 2023, since uh, we are now in November and Hacktoberfest has officially concluded. So we have some stats on that. The uh, the Java enhance, uh, the Java support plan for Jenkins and the JEP that has now uh, been submitted as a draft for Mark. Uh, the update CLI discussion, which we've been uh, having for the last few sessions and the October newsletter, uh, which is currently being compiled and we're looking to publish uh, next week. Uh, anything else that needs to be added to the agenda? No, nothing I can think of. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, good. No worries. Um, like I said, uh, if Mark does join us uh, and he has anything to add, we'll make sure that gets on there as well. Uh, but we'll get started. So uh, first thing on the agenda is the version documentation site for Jenkins.io. This is something that we've been discussing uh, for quite some time now. Uh, no new updates as far as uh, status goes, but um, just to touch base again on this. So uh, Chris has started the conversations with the infra team to, to figure out uh, the next steps for that and getting that going. Uh, they're preparing the Antora site to be hosted uh, for the version documentation and kind of the next steps they need to take before that's uh, really official. Uh, and there is a prototype site that Chris and Bandit had been working on uh, that does showcase the Antora build of Jenkins.io. Um, so same uh, information as before, uh, but just want to keep on top of that. Next up is the blog post that we published recently uh, by Adrian. So this is just uh, the announcement blog post for the plugin health score. It's now available on the plugins.jenkins.io site on every plugins uh, page. It's in its own uh, tab that says health score. And if I can zoom in here, we'll see it a little bit here, uh, but that's a new tab that's available on every plugin. Every plugin scored and graded in the exact same way. Uh, so it is consistent across uh, all the plugins within the Jenkins ecosystem. Uh, and Adrian has provided this blog post that goes into more detail and explains uh, some of the logic and reasoning as to why that's gone on and, uh, and how it can help you. Uh, next on the agenda, we have another blog post from a new author. Uh, his name's Mark Phillips, and he wrote a blog post on the uh, guide to updating Jenkins uh, for the uninitiated. Sounds like me a lot of the time. Uh, but yeah, it's a great little blog post uh, that just details how to update Jenkins and what that means. Um, some great steps, just some great writing here and a really lovely contribution from a new uh, contributor by uh, from Mark. Um, big, big thanks to Mark and thanks to uh, Bruno for actually helping get this uh, published into the Jenkins site. Uh, he helped with uh, getting that put together and, and uh, submitted as pull request. So yeah, thank you very much, Bruno. You're welcome. Um, Mark is active on the community Jenkins IO website, but is not active on GitHub yet. You know, he even doesn't have an account. That's why I had to help. But I'm super happy to have him as a first time contributor. That's fantastic. And uh, what a great example of ways to contribute to Jenkins without necessarily contributing code or anything directly to Jenkins itself. But being part of the community, answering questions, helping guide others, that's a really, really terrific example of uh, in a little bit more um, out of the box for contribute contributions. So that's really great to hear. Um, and hopefully we see more from Mark. Uh, next up, there were a few smaller uh, updates for the Jenkins.io site in, uh, in the case of documentations. Uh, I just wanted to take a moment and acknowledge and highlight and thank these contributors. They're newer contributors to Jenkins, even if they're working on other projects. Um, and again, these are not world-changing updates necessarily, but uh, folks are taking the time to go through and update some stuff that uh, they didn't feel was right. And that's great. Uh, 
taking it small, starting small in an open source project that you may not be familiar with, uh, making suggestions that are not, you know, game changing or breaking, but can have some benefit there. Uh, these are the, the pillars of what a lot of folks recommend when it comes to open source and participating in uh, an open source project. So thank you to uh, all three of the contributors for putting that work together and welcome to Jenkins. Yeah, welcome. I think you, you spotted it. Um, you know, start small and then iterate. It's a way I started uh, with Jenkins. Oh, there is a comma missing in this part of the documentation. Uh, yeah, I got my first comment. I was happy as can be. And yes, it's a good thing to start this way. And I hope to see many more contributions of these new contributors. Welcome. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, I think I think it's nice that uh, it showcases the sentiment. Like I was saying, uh, I've been working with some of the um, heavier lifters in the community and the, and the project itself. Uh, and they all seem to have a very similar line of advice of start small, get integrated, see what's going on, kind of like get your feet wet, but don't 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 feel like you need to jump in in that way. So really nice to see and um, just really great to have that exemplified in uh, this way. So, yeah. Uh, great. Next up. Uh, so prototype JS has been removed from Jenkins as of uh, weekly 2.426. We've been discussing this for a few weeks now. Um, Basil wrote up this blog post explaining that uh, back at the beginning of October, which is great. Thanks to him for writing this up. Uh, and the everyone that's worked on this uh, to get the prototype removed from the various plugins and Jenkins. Um, there is a tracking sheet here in the original blog post that we have that does have uh, all the plugins that have been updated and adjusted. So um, there are a couple that still need to be have uh, need to have prototype removed. Um, but we have got issues created for those, and we are uh, Basil has gone uh, out of his way to check in or at least try to uh, connect with the maintainers of those plugins to get that taken care of. Um, we may need to give him a little push, but uh, the work has been done, and um, yeah, this will be implemented as part of the November LTS release as well. So uh, that'll be uh, speaking of the November LTS release. So LTS 2.426.1 will release on November 15th. So just a couple weeks away. Uh, I've created the pull request for the changelog and upgrade guide already. Uh, the upgrade guide does need to be updated. It's going to include the prototype information along with the list of plugins that still need to have updates. Uh, and it's the changelog itself is gonna have include a banner um, because of all the recent changes and updates with Java 17, you just wanna make sure everyone's aware of those things. Uh, so there will be a banner similar to how there is one right now for uh, 414.3. Uh, that'll just give a couple quick notes about, um, hey, we're using this as the default. If it's not specified, these tags are no longer working. These are the new tags you need to use, that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, the upgrade guide does need some more edits to be made. The change log uh, at this point in time should contain all the uh, backports and issues. So um, I think there was one that was just merged uh, a couple of days ago that wasn't originally part of the candidate list, but it's now included. So um, even that's been that's in there. So um, we should have everything we need on the change log itself. Um, obviously, uh, any further review, feedback, suggestions, or changes are able to be made until that uh, release. And I am welcome and open to all all of that. Uh, next up, so uh, Jenkins Governance Board and Officer Elections for 2023. So the nomination period did close this past Friday. Um, voter registration period is open till Friday, this, this Friday, the 5th. Um, depending on the number of nominations we have for each uh, position, the voting process may or may not happen. Um, similar to last year where we did not have enough nominations, uh, we did not hold a vote. There was no need to since there was no uh, way to vote for someone over another person. Um, this year may reflect that same process, but uh, that will be TBD. So keep an eye out for that in the next week or two. Uh, so we're now, like I mentioned at the top of the hour, we're at November 2nd. So Hacktoberfest 2023 has concluded. Uh, as far as Hacktoberfest 2023 goes, uh, there was a dip in participation compared to last year, but that is a sentiment that was felt throughout other projects. Uh, Oleg, who's one of the uh, 
board members said uh, he had a similar experience with other projects that he's participate that he participates in. Um, so this seems to be a common theme. Uh, the other side of that, the spam rate was much, much lower this year than it has been in previous years, which was great because that made everyone else's lives that much easier, uh, not having to wade through all the spam requests or pull requests that are unnecessary or uh, just downright wrong. Great. Uh, as far as pure numbers and data goes, so this year we had uh, over 1,000 uh, PRs created, so 1,029 to be exact, um, 415 Hacktoberfest PRs in total, uh, 81 different contributors for the Hacktoberfest PRs, uh, 356 valid Hacktoberfest pull requests, and 68 validated contributors. Um, so yes, the numbers were a bit lower than they were last year, but uh, it's a common place of other projects and um, the quality is really what's important here. Uh, it'd be great to have all the numbers in the world and get those higher and have more participants, but provided the participants we have and the contributors are doing really quality work, um, the idea is to help them get acclimated to open source. And, you know, of course, as a project, we want to benefit from helping those people get acclimated. So uh, we're getting the results we want even if it might be a little bit uh, lower than last year. Uh, next up, so we have the Java support proposal. Um, this is the Jen Jenkins enhancement proposal that Mark has submitted. We've been discussing this now for the last, uh, it's been a little bit, but um, the idea is that we're looking at a two plus two plus two support model for each Java release uh, going forward. That would mean we are supporting the release for two years, uh, but it's not required. So Java 17, uh, it is not required, but we are supporting it. Uh, then when Java 11, next year, Java 11 is going to be end of life. So uh, we're gonna make Java 17 required. Uh, and then there will be a period where uh, right, like right now, Java 21 is being supported. Uh, and then once we get to the end of that two year period with Java 17, Java 21 will then become the required version. And then Java 17 will eventually be unsupported. And so uh, we within the enhancement proposal, there's been a lot of discussion going on around uh, the different use cases that this could affect between enterprise customers or enterprise users and early adopters, developers, small time or smaller scale operations. Um, they have different needs, they have different issues, they have different uh, points of contention or concern when it comes to this sort of plan. So the two plus two plus two option is what we've come to find as a nice compromise in between the two where we're not supporting something that's so old that we shouldn't be anymore, but we're also not forcing anyone to integrate new technology before they're ready. Um, Obviously, there's some still some fine points to come along with that. However, this is a really nice medium that we've come to find. And the discussion isn't necessarily about the proposal itself. It's about what kind of extraneous issues could come up or what other concerns people might have when it comes to something like this. Uh, and it's, it's really come down to how conservative are we going to be with this warning? Is it going to be too far out? Is it going to, that it's ignored? Is it going to be too soon that it's too much to do in a short time? Like that's the kind of fine tuning that we're looking at right now, which is like, if that's the worst thing we have to worry about, that's great news. Um, that means everyone is at least accepting of this, this plan to support these in this way. Um, the nice thing is too, that also lines up with uh, the upstream support of these things. So when Oracle's supporting it, when Java's supporting it, uh, when Red Hat's supporting it, all these other uh, you know, uh, entities that are not Jenkins are gonna stop supporting these things at some point as well. If we line up with that stuff, everything's uh, that much smoother in the long run. So really great discussions being had. I think the proposal's really nice. Uh, Basil Crow is writing up a blog post that's going to share a lot of this with uh, the entire community, as well as discuss a, a little bit further about um, some of the, the aspects of these Java versions for Jenkins. So um, looking forward to that. And uh, I think that'll be a really nice and digestible way to get this information out to everyone. All right. 
Uh, next up on the agenda, so uh, the update CLI discussion. So this is, again, something we've been discussing for uh, the last couple sessions here. Um, essentially, the idea is that uh, Bruno's created update CLI to help with updating versions of, throughout the documentation of Jenkins and other uh, parts of Jenkins. So there's like Blue Ocean updates, uh, various Timurin updates, uh, anything that basically has a version update. This is uh, designed to go and help. And then what uh, has been proposed is that we also would then have a log of changes being made throughout the site where we don't have to go to the commit history or the git history of uh, the site to find out when something happened and what that change was. Um, this would create a log that's much more accessible, easily navigatable and searchable and, and able to find out uh, when, what, and where these changes were all happening. Um, we've discussed it before. Uh, I think it's a really great idea. I like it. I think having a separate history would just be invaluable to finding out when something goes wrong or if something changes and we need to revert back. Um, we have uh, a, pro a process going on right now to remove some of the old and no longer used pages on Jenkins.io. Um, this sort of log would be perfect for that project because we're making changes in a lot of places. Um, we're trying to determine when something was removed, where it was removed from. This, this kind of thing would help in determining a lot of that information. Um, Bruno, anything you'd like to share, point out, uh, make a point of on this? No, no uh, you sold it so well. Uh, <laughs> wow, uh, <laughs> I couldn't have done uh, that well. So no, that's uh, thanks a lot for your explanation. It's much more clear when you do that. Um, yeah, I'm just waiting for somebody to merge it one of these days, or I don't know, We I like it to progress if that's possible without putting the burden on anyone, uh, because mm -hmm. I've got <laughs> a few other ones um that depend on that so yes uh okay. it's a um, continuous process i have all the parts of the documentation to update after this one gotcha um so uh let uh i wonder if you can clarify for me then bruno is is if we merge this is there any is there any concern with just merging it or uh getting it into the repo at this point in time or is it more just a we're looking for agreements and confirmation from others. I think we're almost good to go. If you click on the file change tab, I think mm -hmm. I made some modification, but that won't uh, get rid of the existing code. Um, yeah. So that should be good. You know, it doesn't break the website in itself. It will just create some code to make some new PRs. And if ever the PRs are not helping or doing nonsense, um, then we can just ignore them and uh, would work. We can um, revert uh, my uh, PR, but I don't think that would be necessary. We can just ignore uh, the PRs yeah. waiting for my correcting PR. Yeah, OK. Um, OK, uh, then. Maybe what I'll do is I'll double check with Mark either today or yeah. tomorrow and just make sure. Um, I, I have no problem merging it myself. I, like I said, I like the idea and I think it'd be really useful to have. Uh, worst case scenario, we get some PR noise that we don't listen to, like you said. Um, not the end of the world. Uh, yeah. But yeah, let's I, get so another I think, pair of eyes. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Um, and Alex Brandis has already approved, said he likes it. So, uh, I mean, that's a pretty good sign for me as well. <laughs> so, yeah, no reason to hold this off any longer if there's nothing of concern there. And, yeah, I'll take that one to Mark and, talk, and uh, just check with him about it. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Uh, and the last, so the last item I had on the agenda was the October newsletter. This is currently being compiled, and once it's finished being compiled, we'll look to publish it when it's ready. Uh, I need to update my section a little bit, so guilty. Um, and I think there might be a couple other sections, so I'm not alone, but I'm not going to name names. Anyway, um, so uh, yeah, the October newsletter should be here within the next week or so. Um, and yeah, uh, there's some other stuff that's coming up uh, for Jenkins down the pipeline. Uh, not 
totally ready to share all of that just yet. Um, but really exciting look into our community and how um, how our community can inspire and enrich others with um, just themselves. It's a, re it's a really nice uh, project to highlight some folks that deserve highlighting. And I'm really excited to share that when I'm ready. Outside of that, I think we've finished up our agenda. Bruno, do you have anything else that you'd like to share or talk about? No, thank you, Kevin. I'm good. Okay. So then in that case, uh, I'll go ahead and end the recording here. Um, video should be available in 24 to 48 hours. Thank you, as always, for joining and watching. Uh, if you haven't joined us, take care, stay safe, and uh, yeah, we'll see you again next week. Bye now. Bye-bye.